Hi there, welcome to Z Online School. In this video, we're trying to answer the questions for those people who want to find angular distance of latitudes and longitudes. By the end of this video, you and me should be able to measure angular distances of latitudes, angular distances of longitudes, and how we can use these angular distances to locate points on the Earth's surface. At the end of this video, we've got study tips. If you'd like to answer questions involving angular distances better. The first part of this lesson is looking at angular distances of latitudes. And as we're looking at angular distances of latitudes, there are some things we need to take note. The first step to finding an angular distance is locating our equator. In this diagram, the equator has been shown through this label here and this arrow. But mostly in questions, it will come as zero degrees to be just indicated by the side of the diagram, usually a diagram looking like a sphere, and we'll have our zero degrees on one of the latitudes. After we've located the equator, we need to locate the center of the earth. Then lastly, we need to locate the latitude whose angular distance we want to find. Let's say we wanted to find the angular distance for this line. And so there was a point there. Meaning when we join these three points, we're going to form an angle. After we measure the angle in between these lines, we can confidently say we've got the angular distance for the latitude that's been shown here. Let's say this angle here was 20 degrees. It means the angular distance of this latitude from the equator is 20 degrees. Now, to get a better picture, I'd like you to imagine this in 2D instead of 3D. Our thick line here shows the equator, while our red line shows the line of latitude we're trying to measure in the diagram. This is the angle between these lines. As you may see, it comes from the equator as the base, then points to the latitude that we want to measure. This diagram can be very useful if you get confused of how to measure the angular distance. And therefore, this is how we find angular distances. And particularly for this question, this latitude is 20 degrees north. There are three points you should note when handling questions involving angular distances. One is that angular distances of latitudes are measured using the equator. You don't use any other line as your baseline. As you saw in the 2D representation there, our equator was the line where we had our base. Then a line was drawn from the center of the earth to the latitude whose angular distance we wanted to measure. Then you should note that latitudes in the northern hemisphere end with degrees north, while latitudes in the southern hemisphere end with degrees south. With that said and done, that's basically how we find angular distances of latitudes. We now go to finding angular distances of longitudes. The way in which we find angular distances of longitudes and latitudes is basically just the same. The only thing that differentiates how we find them is our baseline. For longitudes, we have the prime meridian instead of the equator. If you want to know more about these lines we're talking about, that is the equator and the prime meridian, you can check out our video under the key concepts of Earth geometry. It will help you get on the same pace as we are moving. In this diagram, our prime meridian is this longitude here. However, it can be anywhere. It can be here, it can be here, anywhere around this region. And just like the equator, we can locate the prime meridian through the label it takes, zero degrees. Once we have located the prime meridian, our next step is locating the center of the earth just like we did. And the third step is finally locating the latitude whose angular distance we want to measure. After that, we draw our lines joining these three points and measure the angle in between these two lines. And tada, we are done. We can also use the 2D representation to get a better picture of how this looks from the top view. The black thick line shows the prime meridian, while the red line 
shows the longitude whose angular distance we want to find. And so from the top, it's easier to see sometimes instead of this, but it's all due to your preference. And so this longitude we found the angular distance for is 90 degrees east. This is because the prime meridian cuts the earth into western and eastern parts. You should also note that angular distances of longitudes are measured using the prime meridian and longitudes on the left of the prime meridian end with degrees west while those on the right end with degrees east. When you look at the words left and west, you notice both have got E. So that's how you get to remember which side is the western side. If you get confused, that's very useful. Now, why are angular distances so important in earth geometry? They are important because these are what we use to locate points on the surface of the earth. It should be noted that we always start with latitudes, then longitudes. And sometimes you won't be always asked to find angular distances as they'll be given in equation. In the diagram here, the angular distances that have been shown are for longitudes, and these in white are for latitudes. Like I said earlier, we won't have labels showing us which line is the prime meridian and which line is the equator. We'll just have numbers talking to us you know this is mathematics right so numbers are doing the talking so we can see that this is the equator now and this is the prime meridian with these labels available now we can try to use angular distances to locate some points on this diagram we're going to have points a b and c and we're going to start with a and go through these letters or points until we get to C. When locating point A, just like we said, we're going to start with the value of the latitude, then end with the value of the longitude. If you can observe with me, point A lies on the latitude in between 10 degrees and 20 degrees. So if we are to find the scale, here we can see that it's moving from 0 to 5 to 10, then 15. Therefore, Point A lies on 15 degrees south, while it lies on 25 degrees east. And therefore, the location of point A will be written as follows. We're going to do the same for point B. We start with its latitude, which is 20 degrees north. What I want you to note is that when we've got a point in line with the prime meridian or the equator, we don't have any letter. We just have the zero degrees. We don't add whether it's east or west or whether it's north or south. For point C, I'll give you some time to work it out. If you found this as the location of point C, you got that one correct and you're getting the understanding of how angular distances are used. Now, we get to the last part of our lesson where we're sharing some study tips. Usually when pupils are answering questions under angular distances, there are some common mistakes they tend to make. The first mistake is forgetting to use the angular distances between a latitude and the equator or forgetting to use the angular distance between a longitude and the prime meridian. That was quite long, but what I just mean is simple. In this diagram here, we've got some latitudes, 30 degrees north, the equator, latitude A, and latitude B. Our main focus should be on finding latitude A and B, having that they are, they are known ones. Latitude A is quite simple as we have this angular distance given here. We just have to know whether it's on the northern hemisphere or on the southern hemisphere. And as you can see, it's below the equator, so it's in the southern part. Therefore, A is simply 20 degrees south. Now, how do we work out B? This is where 
the mistake usually comes in. Most people will take the 80 degrees as the angular distance for latitude B. However, you should note that in the angular distance given here, there's a 30 degrees for the latitude, 30 degrees north. Therefore, we need to subtract it from this 80. And hence, we're going to have the angular distance for B as 50, giving us latitude B being 50 degrees south. The same applies also for longitudes. If you are asked to find the value of latitude U, you can see we've been given some angles here, 120 degrees, 60 degrees, and 15 degrees. The angular distance for longitude U is not 15. It's actually the 60 plus the 15, giving us 75 degrees east. Another mistake most people make is writing points on the equator with 0 degrees north or 0 degrees south, or writing points on the prime region with 0 degrees east or 0 degrees west. This can't even really happen, because when something is on the equator, it's sort of on neutral ground, so it's neither north or south or neither east or west. So take note when you're answering questions never to make a mistake of writing a point in line with the equator with degrees north or south or a point in line with the prime meridian with zero degrees east or zero degrees west. We already covered the question earlier in the video. You saw how it was undertaken. That's how it should be. The last tip you should always remember is that the difference of latitudes or longitudes on different sides is their sum. We'll use a diagram here to elaborate this point. Let's say you are asked to find the difference in latitude between point D and point C. It could be quite simple because we've already been given the latitude on which D lies and C lies on the equator. Therefore, the difference of latitude C and D is just 35 degrees. But what if we were asked to find the difference in latitude between A and D? A is in the northern part and D is in the southern part. Most students again would simply subtract 35 from 50 and get 15. This answer is not true because point A has its own angular distance from the equator and point D also has its own angular distance from the equator. Therefore, we're going to add the angular distances from the equator and get the difference in latitude. This will also apply to A and C, where we're going to have our answer 70 degrees. Thanks for watching this video till the end. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video to people you think it might be helpful to.